live from Atlanta, Georgia. It's at home with AJ. And now, your host, Anthony S. and Jasmine. Welcome into our home. Here we are at home with AJ. Welcome everybody. Can we fit about a million and a half people in here? I think so. Okay. I don't I don't mind at all. If little Andy don't mind, I don't mind either. He does not Ooh. mind. He's just all full of love. Welcome everybody. My name is Anthony S. And I am Jasmine. And we are so glad to be here with you another evening. Another evening with At Home with AJ. Mm -hmm. This is little Anthony. Little Anthony is our part of the family, and little Anthony goes everywhere we go. Mm -hmm. And pretty soon, you know, we're going to be doing uh, some children's books, um, all about little Anthony and his adventures, what he does when we when we go on the road, you know, for our book signings and and interviews. He takes off on adventures of his own. He sure does. And he has a little friend by the name of Piper. And we'll introduce Piper to you uh, on another show. Mm -hmm. He plays music and children follow him and they get in trouble because they have to get back home. So little Anthony helps them get back home because he has to make it back home before, before we, we get do. home. You oh, see, yeah. I think Piper is a percussionist. Yes, he plays oh, music and, and that's why he's called Piper, like the Pied Piper. Right. But that's a whole nother uh, show. So that's coming soon, y'all. Look out for the adventures of Lil' Anthony. As a matter of fact, uh, you may not believe this, but he was telling me earlier, he said, uh, he says, he calls me Ant. Mm -hmm. That Lil' Anthony, he calls me Ant. He says, Ant, are we, uh, you know, there's something that I, w I would like to do. And I said, I said, I said, what is it? He said, well, I want to talk, I, wanna, I, wanna, I, want, I want to meet all the children of the world. Um, and I said, I said, why? He says, because it's important. It's just like Santa Claus. I've got to, I know, I know. I, I, I'll say it. Don't worry about it. I, I got you. I got you, Aunt. I've got, he says, I've got to reach everyone. i got to talk to everybody. i got to give gifts and show love to all of my children friends. So um, Anthony, Anthony, excuse me, is actually going to come out with his own Facebook page as well. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, believe it or not, he's coming out with his own page. It's in the works right now, so this way you could you can write just like you 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 write into us and you and you friend us. Well, you can friend little Anthony. Um, his page will be up very shortly, so look out for Anthony's page. That's right. Yes, on Facebook. Okay, babe. And another thing that we uh, want to introduce on the show. Something new. Shout out. Shout outs to oh, AJ. Oh yeah. You can now shout out your friends. To your friends, you can shout out to what events that you are having coming up in the, in, in the near future. Uh, we are able to now take your shout outs, just like a request, and say your shout outs on the air. Now, mind you, keep this in mind, everybody. This is a weekly show. So you, when you shout out and you make a shout out to our email, which is anthonyjasmine5659 at yahoo.com, send your shout outs to that. Now, when you do that, we will read your shout outs on the air, but keep in mind now, the shout outs that we receive for, let's say we're doing, let's say right now, you're shouting out right now, let's say I'm shouting out right now. This will not be, your shout out won't be seen or, until next week. So we need, shout out, we need your shout out shout to outs. us, but it won't be until next week because again, it's the weekly show. Yes. Now that's how you shout out to, let's say us. You can shout out to us, you can shout out to your friends. Again, it won't be seen until next week. Now, when you want to shout out an event that's a little bit different, that works a little bit different, we need about two weeks to do, to do a shout out event. So give yourself two weeks because if you shout out like now, we read a shout out right now, it's not going to be seen until next week anyway. So your shout out should be after your air date is seen. So give us a couple of weeks when you're shouting out for an event. It's as simple as that. All right? And with that in mind, I want to 
do a shout out. Drummer Demetrius Master D. Reed will be performing with Tiny and the Saints at Hosea Feed the Hungry on Thanksgiving morning. Wow. Tammy Harper will be performing with her reggae band, Itopia, at the Royal Peacock in Atlanta on November 28th from 8 to 11 p.m. So we want to thank you guys for sending those in and, and the rest, everybody else out there, come on, send them on in to us. We want to get your information out there. We want people to come and support you. That's what it's all about. Shout out to us. Again, shout out to Anthony Jasmine, 5659 at yahoo.com. Shout out your event. Make sure your event is two weeks in advance. And you can shout out to us if you want to, to see how we're doing, and we'll shout out back at you. That's right. So now, Anthony, tell me what is the good news. Good news. On this show, we only talk about good news. That's right. If you want bad news, leave that for the other shows. But on this show, you, you will only, only hear good news. But I found a story, and it's a heartfelt story. It's very good. It's a feel-good story, just like a feel-good movie. Mm -hmm. It's a feel-good story. And it takes place over in London. Um, There's a, 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 an elderly fella by the name of Bill. He's, very, he's an emotional 95-year-old man. Uh, his name is Bill. And he called into the Alex Dyke radio show. This is BBC, so it's over, over in, in England. Um, and he told the host, Alex, that he's lonely. Uh, uh, when he told him that, that struck a chord uh, to all the listeners. So what Alex did, he, he immediately ordered him not just a taxi cab, he ordered him a limousine uh, to bring him down to the station, mm -hmm. which was real cool. And when he got to the station, he was greeted by a staff member. Now, we're thinking that, you know, he's going to get the flowers and the cake and all that stuff. <laughs> the, staff member, the staff member gave him a handshake. Alex said, that's not good enough. We got to do a little bit more than a handshake. So what Alex did was he gave him first a big hug, like a hug he's never had before. Wow. See? So after that, then he sat him down and then he spoke to the listeners and he told his story. So Bill, why are you, you know, why are you lonely? Tell everybody. Well, Bill, like I said, Bill's 95 years old. He just married his wife 30 years. He's known her 30 years, but he just married her. Oh yeah, they were friends. They, they were friends mm -hmm. for like 30 something years. Mm -hmm. you know, he, he's 95 and she's, she's 85, but they just got married a year ago and she got ill she had dementia and that put her in the hospital right oh, she didn't wow. know she didn't she didn't know who he was and you know didn't know where she was so now she's in a, in a nursing home and that's very very depressing to him he goes to see her every day and he said it's like hell going up there so what the listeners did was they they felt so bad for him that they wanted to do something good for him so what they did was they ordered lunch for him. They wanted to take him out for dinner. They even ordered a ukulele band to play for him. <laughs> they wanted to take him to different shows. And all these things they wanted to do for him because they felt, you know, they wanted to give him, show him some love. But you know what he did with all that? He said, you know what, guys? Thank you very much, but, but no thank you. But you know what I appreciate? He said, he said, Alec, he said, I never thought that there was such kindness in the world. And he, and he left it like that. So that is a, a, a great story because everybody right now is loving this man. And he didn't realize that there's so much kindness in this world Aww. until he came onto the show and everybody embraced him. So that's a good, good feel good story. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. His wife will be okay. But the world loves him now, Alex. So, so, so Bill, you know, you're not lonely because the world knows your story right now. Mm -hmm. So that's a, good, that's a good story. That's a great that's story. It's a beautiful story. Oh, wow. Okay. Good so, news, good news. Only good news you're here on At Home with AJ. I know. You're looking really uh, very nice. Well, thank you, like Mr. That. Smith. Like that. I'm, I'm liking this shirt also. Is this, is this very, from, very the, well, this is from the poor man collection, you know? 
The Poor Man Collection is a collection of clothing that um, I am doing, and that's going to be coming out real soon. So look out for the Poor Man Collection. These are samples from the Poor Man Collection, everybody. Um, and I, I'm loving the, 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 the color on you. That color is it's beautiful. Well, thank you. Gorgeous. Thank you. Gorgeous. Okay. Uh, so now you know we have to go into our Ask AJ. We yeah, do have man, questions. Yeah. We do have questions, we sure and do. the first one is from Corliss from Denver, Colorado. Corliss says, AJ, this is my first time being married. I want a big wedding, but my fiance wants, <laughs> he wants to go to the courthouse mm -hmm. because he's been married before. Should I give in to him or go for what I want? Well, Corliss, I tell you. It's your first time getting married, girl, go for it. Get all the bells and whistles. <laughs> do, I mean, you only, you're supposed to only do it one time. And so, and you want that one time to be memorable. I mean, on the other side of that, you, I know you're thinking, uh, your husband, he's been there, done that. It's, it's not exciting to him, but he should kind of look at it from your your side because you've never done it he should understand this he is should the first understand. time getting married and i don't right. think i don't see why any man wouldn't give his uh wife first time being married her day mm -hmm. this is her day you know so, unless it, unless it's a thing about money you know it shouldn't be then, but you have okay. to compromise a little yeah. bit you know she can she can you can compromise and have a, a nice size wedding you know maybe not all the bells and whistles but mm -hmm. some of them maybe get the dress you know, uh, you know, compromise a little bit. Yeah. But I still see, I, I, I still think that she should get married uh, with style. I do. In well, the I church. Do. I do too. First do time, too. he's done it before, he's been in and done that. Don't rain on her parade. Yeah. That's how I'm looking at it. Well, hey, you know I'm saying? Hey, I feel you. <laughs> Peace. Okay. I understand. Yeah. So, you know, brother man, give her her day. Give, give her her day. Her day. You know, uh, this is the, one of the only times that she'll probably have this day. So give it to her. Uh, we hope. <laughs> we'll see. But anyway, write into us and tell us how things are going. Yeah, I want to know. Let I us know. know. Let us know. And the next question, Anthony. Uh, we got a question from Tiffany. Tiffany, sound like Tiffany's on, on Fifth Avenue. I know. Have you ever been in there? I have. Yeah. <sighs> Unfortunately, we, no. Window shopping. <laughs> Just window shopping. Okay, I, I have to window shop. <laughs> um, but we're gonna go in there one day, and we're gonna actually purchase something. I promise you that. I, oh, and you know, I always keep my word. I'm gonna hold you to that. Hold me. You hold me now. Uh, watch it. Mm -mm -mm. Tiffany, let me get back to this. <laughs> T Tiffany from Michigan. She says, hey, AJ, um, my son is interested in blowing the, the saxophone. Um, he wants to play, I believe, the tenor sax. Oh, you, I, you I, know about and, that. I, you know, so the question that she's asking AJ um, is, because he's a beginner, what type of horn should I purchase? Well, first of all, <clears throat> um, I remember when I first started blowing a horn uh, a few years ago. Um, you know, it's going to take time. I didn't start out with a professional horn. I started out with a, a student horn. Um, and there's a couple of student horns that I would, I would recommend. Uh, one is a, a Strauss, S-T-R-A-U-S-S. Um, the other one is a con, and not a con like you con someone, but it's, it's, it's called con. <laughs> um, those are good uh, student horns. Actually, it's on a college level. A lot of college students use that horn, those horns. Um, he has to learn, first of all, how to blow, blow the mouthpiece. Uh, there's certain sounds he has to get out of that mouthpiece before he can even get into blowing the saxophone. He's got to get his wind up. He's got to have a certain sound. Tone is, is very important. Uh, he's, he has to develop his amateur. Amateur is... Uh, when you are blowing into the mouthpiece a certain way. You have to know how to blow, not like that, like that. And you have to make a certain sound. Um, I should have brought my mouthpiece out here and made that sound for you. But um, So it, it, get him either the Con or the Strauss uh, tennis sax. They range in price about anywhere from four to $600. Okay, The professional horns, which he's nowhere near ready for it, um, will run you thousands of dollars. But you're not going to go there until you know that he is serious about it. Before I got my first professional horn, which was a Selmer back in the day, and Selmer, brand new at that time, was running $3,000. Uh, 
and wow. I got it for sale for like nine hundred something dollars back in the day. So, so tell me something. A, a student horn, you said four to six hundred dollars. That's that's for a student. That's horn? for a student horn. Wow, that is an expensive horn. Well, uh, just know, for a student. A, a student horn right now can run you anywhere from four to six hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, anything less than that, you're not really getting any kind of horn. You're going to get something crappy. You okay. want to at least start it with something at least decent. Well, you know? I, I, I hope so. that um, he, he really wants to play because I hope so too. Uh, that's a lot of money to because be putting down for, it, for something uh, that's not on a professional level. Yeah. Um, you know. it's an ex it could be an expense, and then as, mm -hmm. he, as he gets to uh, develop himself with the horn, and, and, and you'll know that, uh, Tiffany, in a year or so. Okay, mm -hmm. um, but it's still going to take time for him to even go into the next level. And the next level is going into the professional horn, but it's going to take time for him to even get to that level. You see, well, so and, and and when I say professional, and I mean buying a professional horn, one of the best horns you can buy is a Selmer, uh, which will cost you right now probably five thousand starting, and up. All right, I had I had one back in the day, but it cost me. I got it on sale for like a thousand dollars, but I know right now it's running five and up. But you know where you're not even near that right now with him. He's got to prove to you that he is ready for that. That's going to take some time. <laughs> so write into us and let us know what's happening with that. Well, I'd like to hear from you. <laughs> well, he would sure have to prove it to me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, Anthony, our guest. We got a great guest today. We do. We yeah. do. She is very well known here in the Atlanta area. Yes, she is. Uh, she is a breast cancer, <clears throat> breast cancer survivor, mm -hmm. and she is an activist, a very strong activist she's also, for the cause. She's also a writer. Uh, she's a writer? Yes. She's a writer. She's an author. Wow. She, she writes. Um, so she is like everywhere. She, very talented lady. Uh, yeah. Uh, if you go on Facebook, you'll see, you'll see her everywhere. So uh, you, you want to bring her on? Yes, sir. Everybody, please welcome Ms. Diana Galloway. Yes. Hey. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> Hello, lady. Yeah, oh, good. Good. Thank you. Look at you. Look at you. Very, oh, very pretty. Thank you. Thank you. You and sit right there in the, in the middle right there. I just love this. Mm -hmm. Your home. Oh, well, thank you so, so much. Thank you. Oh, yes. Oh, you can't come in without saying hello to little yes, Anthony. Yes, you have to oh. acknowledge little Anthony. You, you, have, to rub his, you, you have to rub his ears. Time. Well, you look just like your daddy, little Anthony. <laughs> 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 thank you. <laughs> Thank you for having me into your home as well. Oh I'm excited. Okay. I'm coming up with a book song. So I hear you writing. You're you're an author. Yes. Okay. I don't know if I write as well as little Anthony, but we'll <laughs> see when his book comes out. Well, it's gonna be something else. Well, he understands. He knows yes. how hard it is to write a book. Yes. But. Yes. We've got to find a good publisher for him too. So. Okay. Well, I, I, I can still publish for him. I you know. Oh, that's great. Oh, well, we, we no, really okay. are going to have to talk about that. Yes, we're serious. He's, he's coming up with a book. I'll, give, I'll even give him a discount, him. okay? Oh, my uh, goodness. And oh Piper goodness. is going to join him. Oh, okay. Piper. Exactly. But that, that's a whole other show, Yeah, that's Diane. coming down later. Oh, wow. And now we got to work on his Facebook page. So okay. everybody's talking about little Anthony. The Anthony. <laughs> like, He's blowing up more than we are. Wow. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, you got to keep it going. It's you got to like, keep it going. How's little Anthony doing? He's doing just fine. Oh my okay. god. Okay. Is he jealous? Yeah, I think he's so. Jealous. Just, just a he, he, little bit. He's taking bit. my name. He ran with it. Oh. Just like Lil Kim, Lil Wayne. Now he's Lil Ant. No, <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. So he is mm -hmm. really running, and everybody loves. Where's the bear? Where's, the, where's Anthony at? How come he's not with you? So that's what we always take him with us. Because everybody wants to know where he well, is. Well, you know what? You have to be proud of your child. Um, yes. Okay, just be proud. And just I know. Him and, and, I yes. and you are I proud of Okay. We, we love but okay. Diana, okay, and since we're girl? talking about books, what what is the name of your book? What are you <sighs> writing? Girl, that was so long ago, but I still I still have it. It's called Should Have Known Better. Um, okay. I'm still in love Ooh. with my characters. Yes, Should Have Known Better. Known better. We like all Should Have Known Better. That sounds like a Well, it's 
comment. Okay. Uh, I mean, did you, we have to talk bring to bring Anthony about that. Well, actually, you know thing? what? It's in, I have one in my car. In the um, car. But okay. uh, that's another show. <laughs> that's another show. Please come okay. Yes. Yes. okay. And I am looking. It is a sequel. Oh. So I wrote it, I uh, bought it out in maybe about five years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, everybody's like really mad at me right now because they're like, how would you leave me hanging like that? Because it is a sequel. So I'm obligated to write the second one because I did leave a little cliffhanger in there. Well, you know, that's, that's the best way to leave something, leave people wanting more. Exactly. You know? Exactly. But, you know, it is time consuming and it does take a long time sure. to write a book. So mm -hmm. sure. one Ooh. of these days I'm going to... Yes. <laughs> Don't she I know? Knows. Yeah. She's an author right here. She knows. She's right. Well, I might take a couple of months off and sit on the beach and have a home in Barbados and, you know, Ooh, and nice. sit on the beach and just. Hey. I'm coming with you. Absolutely. You're welcome anytime, both of you. Hey. Little Anthony hey. as well. Let's, let it know. Oh Let's plan goodness. it. Let's do it. Yes. Let's do it. I love Barbados. Yes. I went a few years, a few years back. Mm. in the 90s mm -hmm. <laughs> but um it's a really pretty place oh I, that's my home my parents were born there oh. and we were getting ready to retire there so i'm excited about that so you how are, did you wind up in brooklyn well i was born in england Oh, okay. And my oh, dad was a merchant marine, and um, ah, okay. he was stationed you. in England, I and my parents, so my mom died when I was your young girl, so okay, okay. Uh, we ended up going back to Barbados, and then we were adopted by some co uh, cousin, my dad's cousin, mm -hmm. and she okay. lived in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. So they took us back to Brooklyn, and uh, you know, it was, it, was, it was a nice bringing up. Uh, mm -hmm. I was exposed to so much. I, I mean, I'm just really grateful for the diversity. Yeah. Um, you know, theater, acting, mm -hmm. just all the socialite stuff. What part of Brooklyn uh, were you raised up in? Crown Heights. Okay. Crown Heights. I got, like I said, I got family. Oh, gosh. Crown Heights. Uh, Canarsie. Yeah. Uh, Sheepshead Bay. Yes. Coney Island. Yes, absolutely. All up in there. Oh, you know. and you know, I was raised right on behind what's called President President's Road. Yes. And right, uh, it, all in the neighborhood, it was um, Shirley Chisholm lived around the corner. Yes. Martin yep. Luther King used oh to come and stay goodness. behind us. Wow. So there was a lot of activists in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. and we were always. My parents were always, well. My adopted parents they were always you know on the social networks, mm -hmm. and we were always at meetings and right. planning stuff. So I think I inherited that's, all that's, of that. That's what. That's why you, yeah. you know, you, you took after your parents. That's why you. you I know, saw you, what you they did, and I, I and just like little it. Anthony, I, yeah. you know, <laughs> he's gonna have his own show. So well, you know, uh, both Jazz and I, um, you know, we're go-getters. I'm just like my parents. Exactly. I'm a lot like them. Exactly. Um, they are. They were my parents. Well, my mom is, you know, up there floating just around right my now. Mom. She's a mm -hmm. designer, and she's probably mm -hmm. designing something right now. <laughs> exactly. She's always sewing. Little Andy. <laughs> she's always sewing. Um, mm -hmm. But she um, had a fabulous life. Gloria Smith. Um, probably right now making something to go out in right Wait now. Wait a minute, my adopted mom, her name is Gloria too, oh. from Brooklyn. So, oh. okay, so what a coincidence. Oh no, what was okay, her well, last name? We'll say that for another show. Diane, exactly. what was her last name? Price. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> her maiden name was Lee. Okay. Well, you know, I'm sure she had her and my mom, they probably they, ran, they ran in the same circle. Sure, sure. So, because it's apparently we all ran in the same circle, mm -hmm. you know, hanging out and partying in the mm -hmm. music industry. So, you were talking about 54 and everything. So, exactly. To go the old time. You know, it was, I'm, I, I, I love that atmosphere that we grew up in because, like I said, it was very diverse, was exposed to so much. Mm -hmm. So nothing really, I never grew up with a lot of fear of mm -hmm. anything. Okay. I mean, if you can ride the subways and you can hang out oh, in the streets yeah. of Brooklyn, oh, yeah. you're good to go. You're good, you're good to go. Mm -hmm. so. By yourself. At exactly. That, you know. exactly. Oh, yeah. exactly. You don't know how New York is until you actually live there. Exactly. People tell me all the time, oh, I, I said, where are you coming from? Oh, I'm coming from, from uh, uh, New York. Uh, so I said, you, so you stayed in the city? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was wonderful. Yes, um, yes, yes. Oh, it's, oh, it's fabulous. Yes, for yeah. the weekend. It's, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> enough. Oh, it's great. Just enough. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to live okay. there. Just want to uh, uh, Being a former New Yorker, I can tell you, New York is a fabulous place. That's right. Anything goes, everything happens. Exactly. Good or bad. That's but right. I tell you one thing. I grew up there, and the cost of living is pretty steep. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> Um, so that's one, one of the reasons why I came down here. A lot of New Yorkers, a lot of friends of mine, a lot of businesses that I even uh, have known have moved to, to the South. They came mm -hmm. down here. Mm -hmm. Of course, living isn't bad down here. You can actually uh, see right. money a little bit. You can right. live a little bit. Um, but up there, it's nice to go for the weekend, um, but it's uh, pretty, pretty pricey. 
to, to, to actually live there. And what did I say about New York? It's a city that never sleeps. It, it never, ever, sleep. ever, But it's the truth. It never, does It's ever. the truth. It's a 24 hour town. Uh, it's the only place I know where if I'm hungry at three in the morning, you can get something I can to get eat. something to eat. And you can and get on the train. Or get it delivered. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You can have any kind of food. You gotta you love it. You gotta I love it. So when did you come to Georgia, Diane? Actually, first I, uh, when I left New York, I left in 1984 and I moved to Texas. Uh -huh. And, um, I met my husband mm -hmm. and married him six weeks later. Oh my and goodness. I lived there for... That's uh, another that's Yeah, another that's another show. show. Another show. Another show. <laughs> and, uh, and we lived there for 15 years. And then after, um, after 15 years of living there, I said to him one day, I was like, you know, I think I've had enough of the South. I need a <laughs> blend between mm -hmm. New York and the South. Mm -hmm. And we decided on Georgia, mm -hmm. which is... It, it's a, it's a blend. It's it a is. blend. You got it some is. green grass, bit, and you yeah. still got a lot of New Yorkers here. Mm -hmm. Oh, lots of New Yorkers. Right. And the weather is much nicer. Absolutely. The absolutely. winters are much milder. Yes. But what part of Texas were you in? Austin, Texas. Okay, Austin. The college town. Okay, then, then Georgia. And then Georgia. So okay. ever since I got to Georgia, and I moved here, and I was like, man, these are the people I need to be around, the mm -hmm. movers and the shakers, because I felt like when I was in Texas, I was kind of stagnant. But yeah. that was, you know, my God purpose and God's purpose for me there was to raise my kids mm -hmm. and, and, and right. school them. And, yeah. you know, my husband and I still married 32 years later. Hey. So we're, we're here now. We're kind of like retiring and I'm, yeah. Well, he's retired. I'm still like, this is my new life. I'm it's just moving and shaking. No, retire. no, no, absolutely <laughs> not. No, I just need 24 extra hours in my day. No, <laughs> retirement only means time to do what I really want to do. You know, you worked, you know, mm -hmm. all those years. And so now, now do what you want to do. Exactly. And that's just a word. I mean, mm -hmm, you, don't, mm -hmm. you, you don't have to retire like you're going out to pasture. Right. I mean, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's uh, what I mean. Retire that old you know, job. Exactly. Never, That's all. <laughs> well, who said that we have to be retired at 65? I, I'm never That's right. Going to retire. I'm going to keep living exactly. my life and enjoying exactly. it. Even, I may not be working more. for that particular company even anymore. More. Right. But I'm not going to be put out the pasture either. Oh, no, 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 oh, no, no, no. No, mm -hmm. no. No. This is a second a, a new life and uh, you know, I've raised my kids. Now I, you know, I'm I'm fortunate to be able to be at home and we'll, we'll go into that later on why I'm staying. I stay at mm -hmm. home. But I'm fortunate That's to be good. there for my grandchildren children as a matter of fact my one of my grand you have today. grandchildren oh yeah how, how many so grandchildren four oh four of them two boys blessing. and two girls yes how and many um uh siblings do you have i have this i have two three brothers and um one sister so there's five of us so when my mom passed on there was five of us and okay. she, mm -hmm. i was six years old and she left a, a six-year-old a nine well nine-year-old a six-year-old two sets of twins a set of twins that were three and a baby that was nine months old wow so there's you know I started off with a kind of rough be beginning, but mm. now I just, you know, my mission in life right now is to thrive and to do it with grace and, uh, you know, it's just to survive, but to do mm. it with grace and humor and mm -hmm. I just love life. I mean, Well, I'm we've been so hearing gifted. a lot about you and surviving and doing it because we follow you on Facebook and you're doing some mm -hmm. wonderful things. Well, thank you. Tell us a little bit more about your foundation. And Okay. Well, first, um, my well, the beginning of my being an activist started with domestic violence. Okay, right. and um, I was very uh, instrumental in a organization called Promise Place. I was sat on the board. First, I started volunteering, and then I sat on the board um, because I was a victim of domestic violence. So, while I was very active in that, the passion was there. But it's until I was diagnosed with breast cancer that I realized that. You know, my pa my true passion was to be a spokesperson for the women with breast cancer, but that didn't come right away. Mm -hmm. I was diagnosed with from a routine mammogram. Um, yeah, I was busy with my life. I'd written, just put the book out, mm -hmm. and I was a, a flight attendant at that, that time. And I went for my routine mammogram um, exactly four years ago, around this time frame. Oh, okay, wow. exactly. I had my biopsy like on November 15th. That's when I and I was diagnosed on November like 17th. So this is the my anniversary. And you, you, time. You, you had you had no idea. No until symptoms. To the, to the doctor said that. It, back, nothing. I, my blood pressure was a little high. I was stressing mm -hmm. out. I went to you know he's like you need to go ahead and get your physical and part of the physical was a mammogram. Right now um, now uh, your mom. Is, no, is, his, well, no history. Well, my, remember, my mom died when she was 32 years old. So mm -hmm. I, and then she had a lot of sisters. There was mm -hmm. no history of it at all. Okay. So I, you know, I was just going about my life and mm -hmm. not me. No, no, no. But you know what? I was the kind of person that I never lived on fear. Mm -hmm. So 
I was like, whatever, Lord, whatever you say is, whatever it's going to be, is going to be. Right. So when I got that call, I was actually in flight, and I had just landed in Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina, mm -hmm. and my husband called me. I turned the phone on when I landed, and he says, the doctor says for you to come right away. Well, I, I knew at that time that he wasn't going to tell me, you're, right. going, you're okay to go. Right. Well, mm -hmm. I actually had to fly back on the plane with this news. And, um, you know, I just, I went to the galley and I did not, did not shed a tear. And I was like, whatever you tell me to do. And the word that was given to me was the word fight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That was the word that came. And I was like, you know what? I can fight. I've, I mean, mm -hmm. I've fought all my life. I can fight this. Yeah. But I was also concerned about my grandchildren. Mm -hmm. You know, how they would react yeah. and according to how I reacted. Well, so. I mean, they're going to react the way they're going to react. Right, and they're going to see the, the response from Even me. Even if you soften mm -hmm. the blow, it's still going to be, you know. But at that time, I did not know what my diagnosis was. Right. I didn't know if I had five months to live or five years. I had no, no idea. So when I did, I drove straight to the doctor. My husband was like, do you want me to go? And I'm like, no. I'm a big girl. I, I, I need to handle this by myself. Oh, you and went he alone. Was, yeah, I went alone. Oh, wow. But my doctor was so, he, he was so wonderful. And he looked at me. He could see it in my face. And right. he said, you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. He was like a, my diagnosis, my stage was zero. Oh, okay. Thank okay. God. See, that's early detection yes. is the key. Ooh, yeah. that's it the definitely key. is the key. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I did not know what I was going to face, even though, because I had no idea. I never looked into cancer. I never yeah, thought about it. It's scary. I, I never knew anyone that looked like me that had breast cancer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The sisters that I flew with, no one had breast cancer. I was like the first one. Mm -hmm. So I went through, I had a double mastectomy and a tram flap. I had 12 surgeries between the time I was diagnosed in 2011 to now. Now, can I ask you, you, ha you, your, um, it was zero. It was zero. Why did you have to have the mastectomy? Well, it was stage zero, but it was a two, two centimeter um, uh, cell or whatever that was in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the kind of cancer it was that it could spread. So the doctor recommended that I have, you know, take it off. Mm -hmm. Well, she said, we're going to take one off, but I do recommend that you both. take both of them yeah. off because, because it, it could spread. It could spread. Yeah. Well, when they took it off, they tested it and it was in both. Wow. So it was a wise choice so at good. that time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But while I was, after I was diagnosed, um, you know, all I had was my family that was there. Mm -hmm. I didn't have anybody else. My husband was always there. My children were there. Mm -hmm. And, um, but then I started realizing that I didn't have anyone else, no support as far as, other women because no one right. else mm -hmm. and my friends that were there for me they just couldn't understand and i mean it was rough you you, the, you could you had you didn't know anyone else i didn't know anyone with that. Else. yeah you with could, that really mm -hmm. and i had a male doctor so i couldn't relate to him so then i realized you know what i started looking for a support system and i could not find a support system wow. whatsoever so I did one day luck up. I said, you know what? I'm going to, this is my grassroots. I'm going to go ahead and do this mm -hmm. on my own. And I started, I stepped out on faith and I started on my own. Then I did research as I was searching the internet, trying to get capture some in, images. I found a, an organization called Sisters Network. Mm -hmm. I found out that they didn't have a chapter in Atlanta. And I was like, okay, Lord, that means that's, that's what I'm supposed to be that's doing. So have, I have for, work to do. Yeah, I had, <laughs> exactly. I had work yeah. to do. That was my purpose. And I started uh, the chapter in Atlanta, and it was wonderful. I, you know, the support was there, right. and I was able to be there for a lot of women. Um, and I was was one of those kind of people that look. We are not going to sit around and cry about this thing. You know, so, we're going to move on. Yeah, because so when you started, when you started the the, the the chapter, all of a sudden people started coming out of the woods. Oh my goodness, they were coming they everywhere. Were coming and then it, I was like, it was you needed. and you and you and yeah. you. Yeah. Are you serious? Oh because, they, because there was no 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 place for them to go. Mm -hmm. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Until you came along. Until, exactly. So we had a lot of fun. I, I met you at a ball, and yeah. and yeah, we talked about you being entertainers at the ball because right, right. uh, this man is fabulous singer together. <laughs> I haven't seen y'all two perform together but I'm sure I'll get the opportunity um, I know it's wonderful but I met you two and I was like okay this is great but we I was about my mission was to thrive yes and I just wanted the women to know that you know we're not gonna sit around and have these pity parties mm -hmm. I'm not a pity party person That's I don't have right. time for it. we're gonna dance 
We're going to sing. We're going to do live. everything. We are going so, to live. So when you had that ball, that was your first year with the That's organization? That's the first year we just had our oh. second. Yes, we had our second ball. We've done uh -huh. a, a walk. Mm -hmm. We've done, we've raised thousands of dollars to help other women who had needed, um, you know, financial assistance. Mm -hmm. There's just so much I could go on and on and on, but I loved it. I did resign as the president um, for the simple fact that there was other, my, I had other appointments. I had, God had other appointments for me, sure. other assignments sure. for me. Um, so I, I kept on moving, but the women in the state, they kind of stay attached. It's mm -hmm. like I'm of the, course, you know, of course. because they know I like to have fun. They know I like to have <laughs> fun. Are Facebook. you, is it, is it um, in any way associated with Susan G. Coleman at all? Well, it's a different, you know, our organization was different. It was more on a support level. Susan G. Coleman is, they're there. They have so many components mm -hmm, of it, mm -hmm. but they don't get, you know, like we cry together. We mm -hmm. laugh together. It's you know, more, more close. Yeah, it was more. Yeah. Okay. And see, we can sit down and we can show each other what we look like, you know, and and, 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 and we're cool with it. So mm -hmm. that was the difference. That's, it was more personal. You have to be very comfortable. If, yes. If you, um, go, if you feel you could, you could be yourself. Right. The only the downfall that I had a problem with mm -hmm. was that um, I lost a lot of friends to it. I lost a lot of women that I became very close to. Mm -hmm. And that kind of took me to, that yeah, sucked yeah, yeah. me in and yeah. it was draining me. So I decided to resign as the president, but we okay. still, all of the ladies, we still stay connected. Mm -hmm. We still stay connected. And so what was your next uh, project? Oh my gosh, there's probably so many. I still continue to do balls. I still continue to do fundraising. Mm -hmm. um, during my whole journey, I did kind of, I met another sister. Her name is Dr. China Bethley. We were both speakers at a, an, organ, an event, a breast cancer event. Mm -hmm. And, um, was it here in, in Atlanta? In Atlanta, yeah. It was here in Atlanta. It was at a fundraising where they were actually raising funds for mm -hmm. my organization. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was like, you know, I, I want you to take a look at something that I'm doing right now. And at that time, I, I knew she was a breast cancer survivor, but I didn't know what the extent of it right. was. But we connected. It was like a God's, you know, divine interception. Mm -hmm. And we could just feel the energy off of each other. She mm -hmm. said, like, I want you to take a look at a, an opportunity um, that's available, that's out there. And um, it was called, it's called Carrot Bars, and we, we can go into that later. What, is it, a, what is it called? It's called Carrot Bars. It's a, it's, a, it's a global company, a financial company. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've seen, mentioned that. I mentioned I think, that to you. Yeah. Carrot yeah. Bar, we were just talking about the other Right, day. that's um, right. Uh, I said, well, when she comes on the show, that she can explain it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. than exactly. We, than we mm -hmm. understand. But, um, yeah, I, I hear that's a big deal. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just deal. a simple wealth building program yeah. designed for anybody over the age of 18 mm -hmm. who wants to start creating wealth by exchanging the declining dollar, mm -hmm. declining U.S. We know that the economy <laughs> is not, you know, where it should be. And the dollar is declining. You can't get mm -hmm. what you used to get before for a dollar mm -hmm. that you oh, got no. 20, 30 years ago. <laughs> oh, you know, no, no. you go to Walmart and see how you just pull the buggy out mm -hmm. and it's already starting at $50. <laughs> but what you used to be able to get for $50 maybe even just a year ago, two mm -hmm. years ago, that $50 doesn't take you anywhere no. because the declining the dollar is declining. It's not backed by anything. And I was just at Walmart today. Yes, okay. and it's hurt. it hurts. It hurts. <laughs> and let me tell you, you know, like I just bought a little little bit of stuff, and I'm like, dang, all this. Yeah, money. it hurts your heart, me? you know. And and so, the economy is the economy. The dollar used to be backed by gold, but in '71, Nixon took the gold standard away from the right, dollar. Right. So now, what they're doing is they're just printing off dollars. That's why we're in trillion, twelve. Yeah, trillion they just print off money when they want to. And now imagine <laughs> if we did that. Now I know. imagine if we took. Confetti, can, can, can counterfeit money, mm -hmm. or even if we started writing checks off to the bank and knowing that we didn't have didn't any have money, money behind it, mm -hmm. where would we be? Okay, well, this is what's going on. Yeah. So while this is going on, mm -hmm. doesn't it make sense to take the paper that you have mm -hmm. and exchange it for something of value? So the company Care Boys, you can purchase, you, to purchase, you exchange your declining dollar mm -hmm. for something of value. Just simply by opening up a free online savings account. Okay. Now this isn't stocks. No nope. penny stocks, stocks or paper. anything like that. No. You okay? You physically own your gold. You physically the gold is delivered to you. So in the event, you know what happened in Greece a few months ago? Mm -hmm. They right. shut the banks down. Mm -hmm. So right. just imagine tomorrow, when you wake up and you turn on the TV and they say the banks, the are, banks closed. are closed. Oh, what okay. do you do? You know, we don't carry cash because right. they want us to keep our cash where? In the, in the bank. And the money's just gone. And the money's just gone. gone. So we wake up tomorrow, we have no cash. You can't get any gas. We don't know when the banks are going to open up. What if they don't open up for a week? Y'all are stuck in the house That's with no right. bread, no milk, no eggs, no. So 
But if you change exchange that paper mm -hmm. while the gold is low for currency grade gold, you can go to the store down at the shell and say, hey, look, I got some gold. Can I get some gas and bread, eggs, milk, and juice? Right. You don't think he's going to take that? Knowing, knowing that knowing the dollar has right. no value. So that's what we do. We're educating the community, our mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. instead of this Christmas going out and spending all that money making Jordan rich and all these people wealthier <laughs> and, Walmart. and Walmart wealthier, ex give the gift of gold, right. exchange to gold. And it's, I'm also right now promoting a film called Black Friday. Ex I saw that. Yeah. Yes, you saw that's all over my Facebook right now. Mm -hmm. And um, we're, we premiered last weekend. As a matter of fact, that's the flyer right there. Mm -hmm. It was the producer, Rick Mathis. Okay. And, and it's, it's about what you're what you're talking it, about. Well, it's about the economy. Okay. How we as a people we don't invest in each other. Mm -hmm. You know, the the foreigners invest that they the, the hair industry. Mm -hmm. We're making them wealthy. We're making, but we're not keeping the money within our community. And we have to teach our children, you know, to to save, not spend. We are we are the race that we spend more money. We we um we spend more money. We feed the economy more than any other race. But when you say save, you're still talking about exchanging it for the exactly. for the gold. Now so who's who honors the gold? Well, you if personally you you own the gold. The gold comes from a mine mm -hmm. in Turkey. So it's just like you know back in the day, most of us think in our heads we need to own an ounce. They think about an ounce. We, well, actually think about jewelry, mm -hmm, your stuff like that. Mm -hmm. They think, oh, we're doing good because we own. Well, this necklace will not put my grandchildren through college. Okay. Okay. These red bottom shoes that we're buying, they're not putting our grandkids through college, our children. But gold will put your kids because you get it low mm -hmm. now. Now it's not an ounce of gold. Most of us can't afford an ounce of gold at twelve, thirteen hundred dollars an ounce. But Carabars allows you to buy one gram at a time. So if you can afford sixty dollars a month, you can uh, obtain. You exchange, but yourself. You monitor, man, manage your own account. You exchange sixty dollars worth of worthless U.S. dollar for a gram of gold. Gram of gold. Now imagine saving that over a course of years. Now that one gram of gold that you paid sixty dollars for is now worth eight hundred dollars a gram, and you're sitting on fifty grams of it. Hmm. Ching ching. It just mm -hmm. makes sense. That's something to think and about. And it's and, and yeah. the program is is a simple wealth building product growth program that you can participate at three levels. You just open up a free online savings account and start saving. Right. Doesn't cost you anything. No monthly fees. No maintenance charge. No no requirements that you can buy. You have to buy a certain amount. Guess what? The best thing is, is you don't have no inventory. So the second thing is you save. You start telling your friends and your family. Well, the company is going to reward you for doing that. Just introducing your friends and family to this business. Why wouldn't you want to have your friends and family saving in gold? Why not? And the okay. third level, go so, ahead. So they don't send it to you. They, yes, you do. They, they do send it to you. You physically own, I should have had some of the gold on, but um, you physically own the gold. It's delivered okay. to you, FedEx to your front door. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, people say, well, you know, you know there's going to be the skeptical people and they're going to go, you know, gold, uh, gold you know. Mm -hmm. FedEx would not partner with a company that was not credible. We are in 120 countries. We wow. deliver gold to 123, well more, 120 countries, let's say 120. And we're, um, it's backed by MasterCard. And the Pope, now listen to this, the Vatican, the highest financial institute, just bought 100,000 grams from care bars. Now, wow. you can, I couldn't even add it up. Wow. Right, but listen, people are always saying, well, let me do my wow. research. Well, don't you think that they paid, uh, team of people to investigate this company of course, of course. if the vatican was going to put of his course. face we have a branded card with his face on it so you know but that's the and then the third level is you come in as a business partner right. you lock arms and we just spread this this is a movement mm -hmm. this is a movement and you just show everyone how they can obtain the goal and the company will pay you for that so that's the three levels of participation with this company mm -hmm. and it doesn't cost you anything it doesn't cost you anything to go out there and tell people how they can build generational wealth. Now, that's when we go back to the movie Black Friday. We immediately locked arms because I met Rick Mathis. I saw his video and I'm like, oh, my God, he's showing people what the problem is mm -hmm. on a film. Mm -hmm. We provide the solution and the vehicle to get them there. Where is the uh, film going to be shown at? Actually, it's going to be 
uh, next Saturday. It premiered last weekend. Mm -hmm. That was the premiere. And we're doing a screening because it's so important that we get this out to the community and get the people, you know. So we're screening it um, on November 21st okay. at the Palace. The Palace, And right. the mayor of Riverdale is going to be there. We have oh. the NAACP is going to be there. Okay. But it mm -hmm. is a dynamic movement. And we just want everybody to get on board because 1% of the population is wealthy, 99% are not. Mm -hmm. You're either poor or middle class. So when the wealth transfers, and we know that take happens every few years, well, it's about to happen. The money does not leave the earth. No. It doesn't go to heaven. It doesn't go to hell. What it does is transfers from one account to the other account. So what side would you want to be on? Mm -hmm. Because you own gold. Mm -hmm. Just owning gold makes you even feel better. Because you know when push comes to shove, something go down on this block right here, yeah. you're probably the only couple that would own gold. So that's what, that's what this movement is about. But you have to see for Black Friday. It will be available on DVD. Mm -hmm. You can hit me up on Facebook, right. Diana okay. Galloway on Facebook, and I can direct you how you can get the movie okay. um, as well but every, you know how we sat around and watched soul food during mm -hmm, the christmas and mm -hmm. the thing well this is a film that you need to get and you need to sit down with your family and have dialogue about our finances and it's uh you said next saturday and it mm -hmm. starts at what time it starts at 6 p.m the red carpet starts mm -hmm. at 6 p.m we start the screening at 6 45 7 o'clock um, and then we go into a Q&A discussion, and then we'll also introduce the Carrot Bars presentation at that okay. time. And this is at the Palace, the and that Palace. address is? 188 North Avenue, Jonesboro, Georgia, 30236. Okay. And is there a cover charge? It's $10. At, well, it's $15 at the door, $10 if you buy in advance. We'll also have the DVDs available. You get the opportunity to even see the presentation for Carrot Bars. Like I said, it's a free account. It doesn't cost you anything. The good thing about being a part of the Locking Arms with Carrot Bars mm -hmm. You don't carry around anything. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to get my goal because you set up your own account. You monitor your own account. You buy it when you want to buy it. There's no stress, no no, no, um, no minimum or maximum requirement. You can buy as much or as little as you want. Mm -hmm. So, that, I mean, this is just a great opportunity for us, but we, as a, we have to listen. Um, there's a saying that I saw the other day. Uh, one of the, I think it's, his name was... Um, uh, Anderson. Back in fact, if he's on there too, and he said, we are not going to feel, we're not going to see the light until we feel the heat. Mm. That's wow. deep. That's Think about it. Mm. Yeah. We are not going to see the, the light, light until we until feel the heat, the heat yeah. which is the fire underneath yeah. us. So this is a warning. We're sounding the alarm. We're ringing the bell. We want everyone to know what's going on. So I'm glad I had the opportunity to come on the show and spread oh, that light. But uh -huh. you know what? You have to come back and yeah. really get into oh, yeah. get into this, you know, have a this. yeah, have a, a real lot, a session of, about a lot this. Of things that I know you you, you, you want to talk about. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna move on and go to some some questions from people that know you. Oh, okay. People that follow you. Oh wow, that's, wow. that's exciting. So, oh okay. This bag, this bag <laughs> right I better here. brace myself. <laughs> but you do. You have to come back and yes, we, we, need, we really need to talk to. about this. I this love is this is very important. Yes. Yes. I had mentioned it to you the other day, but. I needed for her to tell the to story. To explain yes. more, yeah. Because we weren't in it, but we heard about it. Good. I said, well, when Diana comes, she will explain it. I think you were one of the down. first people that I, I hit up on Facebook. I was like, <laughs> hey, you know. And I I, yes, you have. Yes. Because I've been looking at it. Yes. You know, so I knew about You've it. You've been but, following, yeah. Yes, I have. So, But I, I said, well, when she comes on, she can talk to us Absolutely. more about it. Really break it down. Absolutely. So I'm glad you did. Okay. Yes, yes. So okay, what we're going to so do is, um, we're going to pull uh, two questions from this bag. Okay. Uh, and then the first question you're going to pull, you're going to give it to Jasmine, and then we're going to do it again, and you'll give me a question. Um, okay. But you're going to pull a question out of here. This is the magic bag. This is okay. Your yeah, all our guests have to do this. All right, all right. And, and you so have to give, answer. Okay, so I pick two? Take Just one take one. Take one out of it. Okay. And then okay, I give it to you. Let's see. All right. Let's see. Diana, this is Nancy from Cincinnati. Do you have children, and if so, how did they react to your diagnosis? Okay, well, Nancy from Cincinnati, I have together, all together, I have four children. Um, they're all grown, and I have four grandchildren. And they were my main concern when I was diagnosed. Mm -hmm. My children pretty much know that I'm a really strong person. They know mm -hmm. I'm not a crybaby. So they were, they were strong. Mm -hmm. I mean... They, they're the kind of children that 
they will support no matter me no matter what I do, especially like my older ones. Well, all of them. They're mm-hmm. very supportive, but they don't like just do it. Yeah, you just let, you know. Yeah. I don't want to see it, you know. But mom, what can I do? That'll bring bring me whatever food I need. But they're very supportive. We don't concentrate. We don't talk about cancer mm-hmm. a lot. Actually, my mother in law had passed away um, from cancer, breast cancer as okay. well. So the one that I was really more concerned with was my daughter. Yeah. You know, we're still, because, you know, because I'm the mom and then it's, it can be right. you know, from one generation mm-hmm. to the other. But I don't talk about it. That's one of the reasons that I kind of did step down from the brand cancer mm-hmm. organization because I don't believe in putting a whole lot of stuff in the universe and I don't like to talk about it a lot. I, 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 I believe in that too. Right. You, 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 so, you, you say it, you put it out there. Exactly. <clears throat> put out there what you want to come, come to you. But they know I am a fighter. So mm-hmm. they know, mommy, you never see me in a corner crying. I don't think any of my children could ever say that they really saw me cry. Mm-hmm. And I, like I said, I had 12 surgeries. And it was, it was really rough for the family, but they knew I was a trooper. So that's a good question, Nancy. Well, and I do have one more question about, about your daughter. I'm sure she's looking out. Absolutely. Because, Absolutely. Because as we you have, said, because mother, daughter. Right. Right now we're looking mm-hmm. into call, they call it um, prophylactic, that's a word, um, where she can just have them removed so yeah. in the chances of it them ever coming okay. and she she's she's pretty happy you know who did that she, um jo- angeli jolie she did it but someone else uh, the girl from married with children she did it also. yes yes the the blonde one yeah yeah, yeah and that's oh, because uh, it's a history uh, Apple, Christina Chris Applegate. Applegate. Christina yes, Applegate. yes 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 yeah. so yeah. they're starting yeah. to do uh, a little bit more yeah. now with that but that, that's mm-hmm. a very very good yeah, question she, she okay. raised a lot of awareness uh, absolutely she had mm-hmm. well she's a celebrity so you know they well, why not? Why not? Why right not? So we're gonna do another one real mm-hmm. quick, and you pull one out okay. and give that question. Okay. To that me. was that was not bad at all. That wasn't no, bad. No, 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 no. Okay. And this one I get to you. Okay. okay. So I gotta put my eyes on. Uh uh-uh. uh Okay. You know when we get to that age. <laughs> Don't you say nothing. <laughs> She well, she has her she thing, and she's cool, got the she, class. She, she, she so bad. I will put mine on there. Uh, mm-hmm. And no, I just can't no see. Shame. I'm just like, okay, don't ask me to read anything. <laughs> All right. Um, this is from uh, uh, Bethany uh, from Savannah. Mm-hmm. And it says, uh, uh, Diana, uh, did you love life? Oh, did your love life change? Okay, here it is. Did your love life change after the uh, diagnosis? Did it change anyway? No, um, no, I would not say uh, it changed anything. Actually, um, it brought us closer together because, like I said, you know, I, we didn't have a whole lot of family. So I, my husband was there every single appointment, mm-hmm. every single surgery. Um, look, we have we are always surrounded by our kids and our grandkids. Mm-hmm. So we really don't have that much alone time mm-hmm. or anything, <laughs> but we've been together for so long right. that, and this is something that I let that happened last night. And I have to share that with, you know, as a couple, it just takes a touch, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. just a touch. And sometimes my husband will just reach over there just to touch. That's enough. That, that's, that's right. good Beautiful. to show love just to, to show and, love. You, and you yeah. feel it. So it that's doesn't right. have to be always, the act. Mm-hmm. That's this right. This question was was a, was was a little bit more personal. Yes. I think. And I think that um, that she probably is going going through the same thing you're going through. Yes. And just kind of wondering, you know, mm-hmm. um, well, you know, how did how did you how did it go after the you know surgery? Well, you, you yeah, know, your image because, changed because because she might have gone through something else, something different. Right. Things may have changed. She just want to know from somebody else. Right. Another mm-hmm. opinion. Did it change or was it What's better? normal? The, was there it is no normal, is there? There, there is no normal, yeah. and it really depends on the relationship that you have with your partner. Um, if he's there, you know, we, we, during the marriage vows, it's the sickness and in health. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you're committed to each other, mm-hmm. That's the commitment, but we do have an image, you know, we, we lose part of us, we do yes. lose part of us, but then you have to gain something else. You mm-hmm. know, you right. have to gain either more confidence because you can get sucked in. I mean, not every woman mm-hmm. is going to handle it the same way that mm-hmm. I may have handled it. Mm-hmm. And that's why the support comes in from right. other women. Right. Because that way we can sit and feel comfortable yeah. talking to each other and saying, well, you know, did this happen to you? Did your husband? Because to be honest with you, many marriages have been dissolved because 
of breast mm -hmm. cancer or mm -hmm. cancer, and men, this men can handle it. Right. But if you take those vows and God is with part of your unity, mm -hmm. You're and good if you to love go. That person, and you love them. Oh. You know, right. That's first. That's for the, that, yeah. that exactly. has to be there before anything exactly. else is there. Well, exactly. You, you so. heard it from, from uh, Diana herself. Yes. Um, Did you get a question? She, um, that was a very good question. Yes. And, and I hope she answered it for you. Uh, just stay strong. Uh, God is with you. Uh, love the one you're with. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Good. That's real, very well said. And Diana, thank you so much for sharing. Oh, yes. I love it. I'm sharing so excited. everything with us. Yeah. So much yeah. information yeah. on, on yeah. all, yeah. On yeah. all yeah. levels. Oh, I'll be coming back because I heard that after the show <laughs> that there's some good eating going on. Oh, and uh, I heard about some sweet potato pies. Yes, sir. Robin Moet. Robin Moet. Oh, my yes. gosh. With um, the pies. And Ooh. I'm going to have to be the judge and see if... <laughs> Who's better? Is it Robin's pies or Patty's oh, pies? Patty's I pie. think that Robin's pies are going to be well, I, are going to win. Can, Robin's pies are. Uh, look, I can't just order one. I must have two pies. I, I, they I they have labeled one. us the pie bullies. Oh, well, well, let me the ask you this: Has little Anthony tasted one? He has. Okay. We, we have to hide him. Don't, don't oh, say it too loud. Don't say it too loud. To oh, uh -oh. he doesn't even know we have them. All right. Well, I won't tell him. <laughs> okay. But everybody, we just want to thank Diane again for, for coming. And we will have her back. Right, Anthony? Absolutely. We will I'm have coming her back. back. Oh, oh, I'm coming back. <laughs> and I want you to look right into that camera. This is At Home with AJ, where vision and reality and come together. Come together. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night.